Hey guys, today I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about Jingyuan from his ability upgrade priority to Team Comp to Lycone, Relics, and Eidolon, and especially the Team Comp because a lot of people tend to make mistake at this part. First, we have his technique. Now, I always consider this kind of non-attacking technique as really overpowered because you can use them and stack them with your other unit's technique buff that allows you to get as much advantage as you possibly can at the first round. And when you compare to units like Hook, where you have to directly attack the enemy in order to activate her technique, seems quite awkward to me. So when you use his technique, the moment the battle starts, your Lightning Lord will be able to gain an extra 3 stacks of base hit. And if you're wondering what is a lightning lord this guy which looks so overpowered and so badass at the same time and he's more like the main character today rather than jingyuan because most of the damage deal is by him rather than jingyuan now as soon as you enter the battle if you pay attention to the action order here you will see a new character appearing at the very bottom of the actions and yes, that is the almighty lightning lord. He has his own individual turn. And if you look closely to the bottom right, you'll see a number. Now that number represents hit per action. The more stacks he has, the more damage he does. And the maximum amount of hit per action that the lightning lord can hold is capped at 10 stacks. And besides the technique, both Jingyuan's skill and his ultimate will be able to increase the Lightning Lord stacks. The skill will increase 2 stacks and the ultimate will increase 3 stacks. Now here's the most important part about all his kit, his talent, which is where most of his damage comes from. And it's actually quite complicated, so I'll try to make it as easy as possible for you to understand. First, the Lightning Lord has a base 60 speed, which if you compare to most of the character, usually an average character will sit between 95 and above speed. So that means the Lightning Lord will move relatively slow. That's why he's always at the very bottom of the action when the round starts. And the only way to speed up his action is by increasing the hit per action. So you can either do that with your skill or your ultimate. And each hit per action will increase his speed by 10. And he will always start with 3 hit per action stacks unless you use your technique to increase it to 6 at the very first round. And the second thing is when Lightning Lord attacks the enemy, it's actually considered as a follow-up attack. So you can imagine how strong he is in the simulated universe where there's so much buff that just increase the damage of follow-up attack. So he's a character that would absolutely destroy simulated universe. So the third thing is is the lightning lord's hit per action stacks each stacks will hit an individual enemy randomly so you can see here instead of saying like aoe like his skill and his ultimate they replace it with a bounce and if you're confused by that it's super simple to understand just think of asta the lightning lord's attack is pretty much the same with asta's skill which is selecting the enemy randomly and hitting them individually and the only difference here is lightning lord doesn't just do damage to one single target per stack it will also do damage to the enemies adjacent to the target target that the lightning lord is hitting you can think of it as like himiko skill where himiko is attacking one target but the enemy besides it is also taking damage so lightning lord's attack is a combination of asta and himiko skill and the final thing that you need to pay attention to is when jingyuan is being stunned lightning lord will not be able to action if jingyuan is dead lightning lord will also disappear alongside with him and with this information now we kind of know how to build a team around him because if he got stunned lightning lord won't be able to take action Action. So the key here is having a character that can dispel a debuff. For debuff character, currently I think there is only 3 characters that can dispel a debuff which is Natasha, March 7, and Bronya. And now let's start with a very standard team build here which is what I introduced in this video. The idea is we start with a tank and a healer as a fixed position because they are insanely important. So you can either pick March 7 or Natasha as the debuff dispeller. As for the final member, usually I would recommend you to go with a sub DPS but for Jingyun, I wouldn't really recommend you to go for a sub DPS because he is capable of representing those both roles. Usually characters that walk the path of erudition is weak against single target but that's not the case for Jing Yuan. He's a great AoE DPS at the same time he is also a great single target DPS because if there's only one boss alive on the battlefield all these stacks from the lightning lord will only hit that one single target which you can imagine how much damage he's gonna deal to a single target bosses. So who should we use for a final character in the team? I would definitely recommend Ting Yun because you can get her alongside with Jingyuan in his banner. 
Why? Because Ting Yun is by far the strongest 4 star support. All her kit is solely designed to maximize the damage that your main DPS does. And I know a lot of Baronia havers is going to question like should I use Baronia with Jing Yuan? My answer is not recommended. You could use it but definitely not recommended and here's why. And I know a lot of you are thinking that Baronia's skill can advance Jing Yuan's action so that he can gain an extra 2 stacks when he uses his skill again. But the main problem here is that even though Jing Yuan is able to gain an additional 2 stacks for his Lightning Lord, the damage buff received from Bronia will immediately disappear the moment Jing Yuan took action. That means your Lightning Lord will not be able to benefit from the damage buff. Because remember, Lightning Lord has his own individual action, so he won't be able to share the same turn with Jing Yuan. And as you know, the more you play the game, the better your units become. So at the very end game, when your Ting Yun gets really really strong and you're stacking as much attack damage as you possibly can for her, Ting Yun as a support for Jing Yun will outlast Baronia by a mile. And not to mention, Ting Yun's skill lasts for 3 rounds. That means your skill management is going to be so much better than having a Baronia. Because if you use Baronia's skill, and you have to use Jing Yun's skill again, you're gonna end up with negative skill points. For his traces, I would definitely recommend you to prioritize on his talents because this is where most of his damage comes from. The skill and his ultimate doesn't do as much damage as his talents, so prioritize on talents first. And as for his basic attack, usually I just recommend you to leave it until you have additional materials, especially for you guys who have already reached Trailblaze level 40 and above. You can see how important these resources are and how insufficient they are. So upgrading your basic attack isn't really a priority now. Just leave them for the time being unless you have additional resource that's sitting around then you might as well just upgrade it as for his bonus ability there's two options here you can either go for the first option battalion crush which is more geared towards bursting or you can go for the second option war marshal which is more geared towards consistent damage because most of the time for Jin Yun, you won't be able to hit more than 6 stacks for your Lightning Lord unless you have your ultimate. So it kind of makes War Marshal a better option to prioritize on upgrading first but it depends on your liking. Alright, now let's talk about the light cones here. Of course, before the dawn, his own signature light cone would be the best fit for him. If you do have Himiko's light cone that you got from the standard banner that has no use right now, you can use that for Jin Yun as well. As for F2P players, I think we should be focusing on 4 star light cone. Now, I personally do think that Herta's light cone is probably the best option for F2P players. And remember, Jing Yuan's Lightning Lord is considered as follow-up attack. So this light cone should be the best option for free-to-play players out there. And any other 4-star light cones will also work besides make the world clamor. Because if you remember, both his skill and his ultimate doesn't do as much damage as his talent. The Lightning Lord is the main DPS that does the most amount of damage. And as for his relics, you can either go for Sizzling Thunder or Musketeers. Or you could go for a 2 plus 2 option, which is 2 sets of Musketeers and 2 sets of Sizzling Thunder. For planet ornaments, I personally think that Inner Cell Sato should be the best option because it increases his crit rate. And if you have more than 50% crit rate, you do increase the ultimate damage and your follow-up attack damage as well. As for the alternatives, both Celestial and Space Seeding Station will do. Now, for his Eidolon, I don't think you really need it because E0 Jingyuan is over already really strong enough and that's definitely a good news for f2p players and for whales if you do plan to whale the shit out of it here are the options e1 equals to more aoe damage e2 equals to more skill and ultimate damage e4 equals to more energy regeneration each sex of lightning lord hit will regenerate two ultimate energy and finally for e6 it basically just means that your lightning lord can do even more damage and hopefully this guide gives you a much better understanding of how Jing and work and that's about it. Peace.